Bam, bam. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Today, it's gonna be a little field trip for work. Um, should be a fun time. What we're basically gonna do is drive down to Quantico, Virginia. Uh, I'm not sure how far that is, maybe two hours. I don't know, I'm not gonna be the one driving. However, we're driving down there. I'm gonna check out the Marine Corps Museum. Nice day off of work. We're all heading down there as Marines and kind of go ahead and see some history and tradition out there. Um, Quantico is one of the older bases with lots to see. I have a buddy that lives out there. Fortunately, he's not home, that little fucker. But um, I'm sure we can still find some fun stuff to do out there. Let me go see what the rest of the plan is for today and uh, meet you guys right back up. They can, they can strike half of their length, man, so... I ain't scared of them. Scared of them. Oh, man. Nope. No, thank you. National Museum of the Marine Corps. Loaded right here, over by Quantico. Headquarters Marine Corps. What is that thing? <laughs> That's our baby right there. Some famous quotes up there. Dan Daly. Gunner. Almost looked like he was looting for a second. <laughs> oh, good old Lance Corporal. <laughs> Low key thing is the command's way of getting me to try to re enlist is uh, by motivating me. Kind of working. All the quotes up there. All the different aircraft we used to fly. Not all of them, but most of them. But right up there, that is the AVAB Harrier. And that is what I used to work on before I do what I do now. Uh, first of all, welcome to the National Museum of the Marine Corps. Uh, as we said, I, I, uh, I'm a retired Marine. I'm actually retired here. Name of the Marine Corps, made probably one of the most famous photos ever taken. Most noble icon of the United States. So we just got a little brief from retired retired major out here, basically letting us know about this place. And it's a hundred million dollar compound museum. Um, he's also saying how the floor is different. Blue represents the water, brown the land, and etc. So we're gonna go ahead and hit up the first exhibit starting with yeah. good old boot camp. Get out of the bus, get out of the bus. Straight to footsteps. Everyone's going and get to your first haircut, which is bald. <laughs> so if you guys want to know what drum structures sound like, come out here, put headphones on, see what it's like. You guys saw my MCRD. You actually see the actual portal. Oops, you can, can you do? More than you? More than me? Alright, more than me. Alright, let's go. Let's go first. <laughs> Dan Daly. Smelly Butler. Oh, May Johnson. I don't know. I'm running out of names. Oh, um, no. <laughs> $5 a person. You can go shoot. So behind me is the Edmund, which is basically what Marines would use to go ahead and practice their shooting without actually firing a rifle. But it's basically as well as you can get it. Um, it's basically an electronic M16 with uh, ranges down up all the way to 500 yards. 
that ship life back in the day. I don't think it got much better. Actually looks pretty comfortable. Couple Marine Corps famous swords right here. That one right there belonging to Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon. Who's Archibald Henderson? He's an old guy. He's an old guy? They say he's the uh, grand old man of the Marine Corps. But there's his sword. Pretty legit. Imagine having a stare down with that. <laughs> I don't think so. So this museum is supposed to start all the way from the beginning to current times with the Marine Corps. So you'll be seeing the EGA change up. When I say EGA, it's Eagle Globe and Anchor. Marine Corps emblem. Corporal John F. Mackey, first Marine awarded Medal of the Honor. And no shave chit too. No shave chit? No shave chit. What's that mean? He, he didn't shave. Look at his face. He didn't shave, he's out of regs. Goes to show you, even the biggest turrets can get the Medal of Honor. Dropping beats since that's back in the day. <laughs> Dropping beats. But the portion over here is I dedicate to NCOs, non commissioned officer. Pretty much basically run everything. Get that link between your junior Marines and your uh, senior enlisted thing. So back in the day, enlisted pay was 667 per month. That was crazy back in the day. Officers and enlisted, 1812, 1300. It's vastly bigger now, but we are still the smallest branch in the United States. Little howitzer, take to range of 1100 yards. There were your tanks right there. Global Expeditionary Force. That's what makes Marines special is uh, amphibious. Basically, go anywhere at any moment in time. I didn't notice until he took pictures, but first flag flown at Guantanamo Bay. That tent life, though, bare necessities. Here's some of the Philippine weaponry. Stuff looks crazy. Old school recruiting posters up there. You got any? The Marines want you. <laughs> As you can tell, we're getting closer to modern time. The weapons are getting a little bit bigger. I'm trying not to get the glare, but right there is a Haitian voodoo drum. Don't curse me. So before we started our tours too, they were telling us that they molded almost all these Marines in here out of a Marine. So they would sit there for a couple hours and get their face molded. But here's an armored vehicle. Top speed was 14 miles per hour. Check out these tires. Where's, where's the cell phone? Spot an EGA. As I said, the emblem is slowly changing. Drum major. Very decorated. So out that way was the making of Marines, so boot camp. We just walked through there, checked out all the 1800 stuff, Civil War, and actually looped our way back out here. So there's Dan Daly's two medals of honor. That is crazy, right in front of me. Alright, onward to tech, check out Vietnam, World War II, and the Korean War. Take a look at how small the cigarettes used to be back in the day. Sweet corporal cigarettes. Smaller than my finger. There's that classic Springfield for you. 
Triple Hundred. It's the nickname for Marines. What's it mean? Devil Dog. Devil Dog. Oh. So one of the things that makes Unique's Marines unique is we have very rich traditions and history. A lot of people don't really have that because they're not as old like the Air Force or the Army where they have them, they just don't really get schooled up on them like we do. But that's kind of uh, what makes us so proud of our heritage. Ooh, famous Battle of Bearwood. So all the exhibits, you're going to realize that they have sound, smell, and different things like that. As you can tell, that's floating. I can definitely feel uh, kind of the sense of what it's like to be out here. See the shot up trees. So this museum so far has done a pretty good job from what I can tell. Everything seems pretty accurate and uh, the gentleman before was telling us on our tour that a lot of people from World War One or World War Two would come out here and kind of reminisce on what was going on. Here's some World War One barbed wire, a first aid packet. Imagine being treated back in the day. Rough times. Yeah, my buddy just pointed out he's got a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> what a trooper. So it's definitely a good place to come. If you need some extra motivation or just to get away from things. The museum itself is free. There are some exhibits that you can actually go and pay for. And as you guys saw, they have that indoor easement or shooting range. Dang, gas mask. So as you can see, war is evolving and weapons are changing. There you go, you can see the Eagle, Eagle Globe and Anchor changing once again. Check out that gas mask. It's pretty creepy. Yeah, there's a little pack. It's got a little E-tool or entrenching tool used to dig holes. Here's your little trench gun for you. Get closer for you. One badass weapon. And here's a mercy, so can't forget about the Navy Corpsmen out there saving lives. Hang in there, dude. Got a family to get back to. So, being from Hawaii, I know the big importance of December 7th, 1941. And if you're a history buff, you know as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you guys kind of remember what it was. So, December 7th, 1941, attack on Pearl Harbor, which leads us to the next World War. And there you go, Pearl Harbor, like I just mentioned. December 7th, 1941. Wake Island, so my last unit was the Wake Avengers. So back in the day, VMF 211, and I was part of VMA 211. So very rich in history. Battle at Wake Island. Wake Island flag. Earning the right to fight. So of course, through history, um, yes, racism was kind of still alive. So as you can see by this quote, if I were to question of having a Marine Corps of 5,000 whites or 250,000 Negroes, I would rather have the whites. So there was oppression back in the day, but that has been fixed. Expansion and the origins of diversity. Keyword diversity. Serving the Marine Corps, any military branch, honestly. You'll be involved with multiple different people of different backgrounds, different races. And you know what? I absolutely love it. You get to experience different cultures and everything. It makes you well-rounded as a person. And you get to see things from different perspectives. Montfort Point uniforms. Anybody know what that represents? Marine Raiders. Basically, the badasses of the Marine Corps. There's a couple of their weapons. Another plethora 
of weapons used in the war. Flamethrower. So a quick uh, little tidbit, back in the day, when my, one of my first deployments, I actually went to travel to Japan, and we actually did some little tours around there of the actual places where they fought at. I remember Sugarloaf Hill, things like that, little battles here and there, so rich in history. I remember going through some caves and seeing where people would commit suicide with grenades, so there's like grenade uh, fragments all over the walls, so pretty humbling. And now to see some more artifacts here in America is pretty cool. So like I said, the attention to detail in this museum. I don't load artillery or anything, but I know they have teams. There's a guy loading a shell. Off to fire. Yeah. If you can't find a submarine, just get me as close as possible to North Carolina. What a savage. Captain Oscar Petros. Air support, so to do our job, we need these guys to go ahead and call it in. One team, one fight, that's our motto as well. Long, slow slog across the South Pacific. The Battle of Navy Terror. Firepower and the Marines to attack and occupy a Very series bloody. M4 Sherman tank. Calling something in from the protection of the tank. Just to show you guys how detailed this museum is. Like, they didn't really have to put dirt back there, you know? But they did it anyway. They could have easily hid that. But they know this is a Marine Corps museum and we pay close attention to detail. If you guys want a quick reference, they have a quick timeline of everything starting from 1775 when we were first born. Getting closer to the big uh, bread and butter of what I want to see here. And that pertains to the glorious battle of Iwo Jima. You guys know it as D-Day. So Iwo Jima, that's basically the battle. You guys all see the Marines carrying the flag on top of the mountain. So just behind this glass, as you can tell, no flash photography. They want to protect this thing. But this is the actual second flag flown over Mount Suribachi. I definitely like how they got the flag wavering over. So this is the type of camera equipment they would be using back in the day. They actually caught the raising of that flag. Sadly, that's not the camera that they were using though. So being a Marine, how's it feel to see that flag? Right on. Very humbling, the history behind this thing. One to give you chills. There it is, and here's the actual picture. Very monumental. That weird shape you see on this museum of the triangle, it's a 65 degree angle to emulate the raising of that flag. Just a little tidbit. So Marine deaths at Iwo Jima. In 36 days, 5,931 Marines and sailors died. So that's twice as many as the whole World War I. That's a pretty significant change. And they have a little wall over here with EGAs and little anchors for the Navy representing every single one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. All of this. Kind of like a little memorial, you could say. So there you go. You got the EGAs for the Marines, and then the anchor for the Navy. Battle of Okinawa, and that's actually where I went on my first deployment. Navajo code talkers, can't forget about these guys. So they would help translate and communicate with the natives back here at home. So the Japanese had good luck flags signed by friends and family, and it was supposed to give them good luck. Just a couple more Japanese swords. So as you guys know, World War II, it's pretty much everywhere, but the Marines pretty much took care of the Pacific, um, being amphibious, that, that's why, pretty much the main reason. But um, if you guys get a chance, I'd highly recommend watching the TV series, The Pacific. Um, it's got a couple good episodes in there, and 
pretty detailed. I love it and kind of gives you a glimpse of what it was like kind of back in the day too. But yeah, out of the Pacific War and now on to the Korean War Gallery. Here's a model of a representative from the Frozen Chosen. And if you guys will notice down here, there's a Tootsie Roll wrapper. There is a background story to that. Here's an uncased M1 Grand. One was a standard service rifle during World War II and Korea. Here's the weapons of this war. M20. Browning, another famous one, right there. And for me, <laughs> I know a lot of these weapons just because of Call of Duty. <laughs> As you guys can tell, we raise our flag everywhere we go. Army Chief of Staff, Check General out the Lawson Collins. Wall. Down here at Kunsan, the condition of cool. Battle of Seoul. And this picture right here pretty much depicts this right here. So you can see the flags up there, the broken windows. And then in here you can see the pictures as well. And some pictures of the actual event. From captain to colonel to commandant. And his old boss. I want to say thanks for your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Marines to another Marine. So M26 tank actually built to take out other ones and everything else was basically for the infantry guys but this one was designed to kill all the other tanks and little fact I was talking to all the gentlemen out here all these are real so this isn't no fake model these are actual real tanks and there's stories behind every one of them pretty cool and as you tell I was able to meet an old war vet and pretty humbling Nice to meet you. They're one of the sections fight for their very existence. Mm -hmm. and you remember that, huh? Dang. Look, look pretty cold, huh? <laughs> so the exhibit we're about to go in is the Frozen Chosen. So, like the gentleman just said, it's gonna be cold in here. Kind of simulate what it was back in there. Pretty chilly in here, huh? Yeah. Like, hey, how do you the the right there. Six, this is Barber. Okay, so case on. I'm gonna go through. You're gonna hear what the helicopter sounds like. His vibrations. So you can imagine it'd be loud at the top of a hill or artillery. Flag posts, gunfire in the background. Pretty realistic, huh? A sight nobody would want to see. Lieutenant Ray William Stuby, U.S. Navy, arrived. Amphibious assault right here. As you're walking up this ramp back in the day. You know when you're going to war. Pretty eerie perspective. Oh, good. They even have this opened up so you guys can see the mechanics of it. Main line of resistance. A couple sleeping racks. A little bunker to look out of. And uh, here's a couple sniper rifles. Look at that dome piece. Confinement. Imagine being confined in this little box. Here's my arm for comparison. Pretty small. So to keep that story kind of short, I was told by a gentleman by the name of Tim that back in that battle in the cold, it was about negative 30 something degrees, so that's pretty cold. But some Marines were, Marine radio guys were getting relieved and while they're getting relieved, they failed to pass the information to the army guys who relieved them that the code word for new ammunition or shells for the artillery was Tootsie Rolls. So what had happened was the Marines, they called in for the Tootsie Rolls and that's exactly what they got. So they got cratefuls of Tootsie Rolls instead of mortar shells, which ended up screwing them. But 
at the end of the day, the Tootsie Rolls ended up being good for them because it was so cold outside. You can open up the Tootsie Roll, pop it in your mouth, and it was good for sealing things like if you had a hole in your shoe, holes in like your fuel tank or anything like that, radiator. You could chew it up a little bit, stick it in there, and harden, and pretty much weld that up. So it was a blessing in disguise, but I'm pretty sure those Marines would have rather had their mortar shells. So that's the story of the Tootsie Roll. And uh, he actually got a free Tootsie Roll from the gentleman. Huh? And there it is. And so here's some pieces of the Pentagon following that terrorist attack. Pretty crazy that this is right here. And here's an overview of the museum that we're currently in. So there's the parking lot where we parked, main entrance, and then here's that little Iwo Jima memorial symbol. We hear some cool operator Marsoc equipment. Out of all that history and everything leads you to today's recent activity and OIR Operation Inherent Resolve. I was actually fortunate to serve in that. So pretty cool time. And as this bulletin says coming soon, the final phase pretty much always gonna continue to grow up in here. Combat Art Gallery. Let's see what this is about. Art, pictures video you name it they all tell stories the exhaustion on all these guys look what i found here that is vma 513 my first unit combat art gallery was pretty cool uh like i said pretty much painted picture stories on a little canvas so those are some pictures of war. I think we're gonna go find something to eat maybe. Get a little hungry. We do have two places available to eat here. One's called Tun Tavern, which is what we want to hit up. Tun Tavern, that's basically the bar where the Marine Corps was also founded. That's actually located in Philadelphia. So it's kind of cool that they named this thing Tun Tavern. Yeah, he was there for a little bit. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good. There for a place of the United States Marine Corps, November 10th, 1775. Pretty cool. Bill Affair. Feel free to pause the video if you guys want to check it out for yourself. Ton Tavern. Pretty excited. Crab cake. Oh, you already know how I feel about crab cake now. Pretty stoked. Let me show you guys what it looks like in here. Who knows if that's what it looked like back in the day, but <laughs> still looks pretty cool. Probably look more like that dressed in that occasion. Yeah. A couple salty war heroes over there. Enjoying some beer. Look at him. Look at him. Ton Tavern Coaster. Ton Tavern Menu. Tun Tavern Sea Salt, Tun Tavern Table, Stool, and Beer Mugs that way. Best damn root beer. And he got the cool Tun Tavern Mug. Damn. Hey bruh. Look who decided to make it. <laughs> With a last resort. Just trying to get some fucking free drinks or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play me. Philly cheesesteak, because we're in Philly, right? <laughs> Alright, just wrapped up our food over here at the Tun Tavern. Food was great, the atmosphere was awesome. Yeah. Um, beer pretty, was good. Beer was good. Uh, pretty good theming in there, so highly recommend if you come out to the museum. If you're Marine, I challenge you to come out here actually, because it's actually pretty great. Um, other than that, we're going to go check out the gift shop and make our way out of here. One last look so you can actually go up three levels and take a look at the museum from up top. Here's all the famous quotes. All the aircraft. Terrible landing down there. Good old AV-8B or AV-8. I don't know what series that is, but that's the Harrier. Pretty interesting. And then again, 
Look how high that goes up there. Hands down, one of the best museums I've ever been to. What about you? Oh my god, it was amazing. My heart. We don't it's know. Like green. <laughs> Not sure if it's because of the pride we have or what. It might be biased, but for a free museum, the attention to detail on everything, and the people we can meet here, it's just it's a crazy experience. So, highly recommend you to come out here, civilian or military. If you're Marine, it's like pretty much a must do. So, I'm gonna check out the gift store and we're gonna close the vlog out. Check out this Lego monument. Pretty interesting. So if you guys been following me along my other vlogs and stuff, you would know that Heather and I, we try to get magnets wherever we go and that's the case right now. Searching for them. Um, not really too sure which one to go with. So this one actually has the monument on here. Uh, some tongue tavern ones and then bottle opener. I think I'm gonna go with this one. All right, successful trip. Successful trip. So I ended up buying the magnet as you guys saw. What'd you end up getting? My wife, I love my marine challenge coin. <laughs> oh. Heather, I care about you too, but you know what? I know magnets are our thing, so that's what I went ahead and got. Anyways, here's one last shot. The beautiful museum. Stick it to us. But um, other than that, I want to say thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.